It's amazing how much the Vatican lies and works to deceive people. It's just amazing how easily they lie. How they can do so just without any effort. Just lie to people, deceive people, uh, do something that's blatantly wrong, and then divert the subject, or deflect, blame the opposition f uh, uh, of, of being extremist. Oh, they're extreme. Oh, they're crazy right-wing Catholics over there. It is just remarkable. It's surreal how much they can lie. It really is, guys. It really is. Today I was thinking about something, and that something is how they are certain things that are pushed by the church, pushed by Catholics, that really are a gateway to paganism. The most blatant example of this, or at least one of the most blatant examples of this, uh, is the Pachamama scandal that took place back in 2019. And everyone saw the little idol of the Amazonian goddess Pachamama. It was sitting there. And there were these other things around it. Well, one of the things that was next to the Pachamama uh, image was a photograph of a woman named Sister Dorothy Stank. And she was uh, a, supposedly a missionary in Brazil. She was some kind of a nun. And she was uh, murdered back in 2005, supposedly by, I believe, some kind of a logging company or um, uh, some kind of a business operation that was in the Amazon and they were cutting trees or whatever. They were cutting down the, the forest, and she was against it, and uh, she was killed. That's what the story is. Well, the church declared her to be a martyr, and they put the Pachamama image next to some other uh, objects, and the, the presentation of Pachamama uh, uh, also presented certain people as martyrs, and one of these people was Dorothy Stong. Well, I did a little bit of reading about Stank, or is it Stang? I don't know. And very interesting stuff about Dorothy Stank. Here is a quote from Dorothy Stank because they say these people are martyrs, and they're martyrs for the Amazon, environmentalists, martyrs, martyrs for Mother Earth, environmentalism. So here is a quote from this woman who the church declares a martyr. And they put her photograph next to Pachamama. And we're supposed to accept this woman. So here's a quote from her. She said, we can't talk about the poor. We must be poor with the poor. And then there is no doubt how to act. We need to be poor with the poor and reappropriate a kind and tender relationship with Mother Earth. Dorothy Stong saw God as mother because you're going to see, and this is what I'm talking about. This is what I am talking about when I say that Vatican will deceive people and will do these little manipulative tactics where they will blatantly, sh they will show something that's blatantly wrong or they'll do something that's blatantly wrong. And then they'll say, well, actually you got it all wrong. Let's see what you saw really wasn't what you saw. What you saw really wasn't what you saw. What you actually uh, saw was an image of the Virgin Mary and we were simply revering the, the Virgin Mary and Pachi Mama is simply Our Lady of the Amazon and it's all good. Everything's great. And we're supposed to accept that. We're supposed to accept that and say, wow, yeah, that makes perfect sense. This is, this is what Christianity is. Christianity is taking uh, the names of goddesses and then applying them to the mother of Jesus Christ and then saying, yep, it's all good, everybody. Yep, as if that makes any damn sense. So 
the Vatican will deceive people, and Catholic Catholic apologists will deceive people as well, and they will say, uh, yeah, you got it all wrong. You see, when she says Mother Earth, she's simply talking about the Earth, and hey, St. Francis of Assisi wrote a poem dedicated to uh, Mother Earth and Father, Son, and it's all good, because St. Francis used the term Mother Earth and uh, or, or, or addressed the Earth as if it was uh, our mother, and you see, it's all good. Everything's great, guys. Everything is great. Well, Dorothy Stong saw God as mother. And according to her biographer, Roseanne Murphy, she, Dorothy Stong, began to talk about God as mother or as father slash mother and to relate to the feminine side of God. She even made a ceramic feminine God figure, which she took back to Brazil and treasured. So she made an idol of Mother Earth, called it God, or addressed it as an image of God, and took it with her to the Amazon, and we're supposed to consider her a martyr? We're supposed to consider her a martyr, so now we're going to be esteeming environmentalist activists as martyrs. Hell, uh, Greenpeace, if somebody from Greenpeace gets shot, you know, they're a martyr now. They're a martyr for God, and, well, they're a, mother, they're a martyr for the earth. So I guess the earth is now part of the divine world. They're a martyr for the earth. Do you see what's happening here? Do you see what they are doing? They are making these little gateways to, to paganism. You know how they say, like, marijuana is a gateway to other drugs, to harder drugs? What they're doing is they're making... A, they're making these little gateways to paganism. Oh, that's not that's not really a Mother Earth, like as if you know, like the pagan goddess. That's actually the Virgin Mary, and it's Our Lady of the Amazon. And you see, we can dance around fires like Native Americans, and we can praise uh, Mary. And you know what? Let's just uh, you know, let's call her Our Lady of the Amazon, and let's start making uh, making it as though the the Amazonian River is divine, or some crazy, just crazy, crazy stuff. I myself met a nun like this when I was in Italy in 2019, the same year in which they had the Amazonian the Amazonian Synod. I met a Mother Superior of a monastery in a region of Italy called Emilia Romagna. Now, we wrote a very detailed article about our experience in, uh, in Italy, and uh, I'll, I'll put the link underneath the video. You can read it for yourself. And this woman, she was the head of this monastery. Now, this woman, she was the head of this monastery, and she was a part of this order. And this order has several monasteries in Italy. One of which is in, is in Emilia Romagna, and then they have another monastery in San Marino. Now, San Marino is technically not a part of Italy. It's like its own country or whatever. Anyway, they have their own flag. <laughs> uh, we went to the monastery in San Marino, San, San Marino, and I am not joking. You walk into the monastery, and they have weird artwork that's erotic on the walls people in the nude it's all it's all there and i'm like i'm thinking what the hell is going on here it's very bizarre so i was with this nun and we were in the car one evening and she starts talking and she's talking about how one of her best friends is a kabbalist master no joke this is the head this is the mother superior of a monastery for a, a Catholic order, she is connected with high-ranking officials in the Vatican. She's she's well networked, and she's here in the car. It's nine thirty at night, and we're stuck in traffic. And she's talking about how one of her best friends is a Kabbalist master, a wizard, and how the man is so holy. She says this Kabbalist master is so holy that I consider him a saint. I got it all on recording. Yo tengo, hay una cábala que es ortodoxa, que es que ortodoxa, verdaderamente de religiosa, o sea, truly uh, religious. Sí, que, que está en la, 
en la realidad de la fe Which is in the real, y hay una cábala que quiere investigar el oculto y no es buena yo tengo un amigo cabalista hebreo que es una persona es un santo sí es verdaderamente un santo vive en Livorno tiene una familia muy especial nos quiere mucho cuando se enfermó de tumor nos llamó para que rezamos para él cuando vino a encontrarnos había la exposición eucarística eh, nosotros cantábamos cantábamos la beberum se conmovió muchísimo y se, pues, se puso de rodilla el que nunca se nunca va a rezar en, de rodilla ¿no? porque me dijo que nuestra manera de, de pregar le ha, se, escuché una, escuchaba una presencia en todo lo que hemos hecho él había escuchado una presencia como la Shekinah Shekinah Glory yes. okay. he felt that the y es cabalista He's a Kabbalist. Because I went, I took a trip to Italy as a pilgrim, and I left as a disillusioned man. Okay, I left as a disillusioned pessimist. Because, because in the Catholic world, I <laughs> I have seen weirdity after weirdity after weirdity. I have seen weirdness after weirdness after weirdness. Let me tell you, and I have met priests who were who were predators, sexual predators. I saw a deacon who ended up being a pedophile. I met a priest who was covering up for the pedophile. Like I've seen so many weird things. I've tried to work with the Catholic Church to squash this problem, and they didn't do a damn thing. They they protect these people. They cover they cover up for them, and they just lie. They literally just lie. And they will defend the monsters. They'll say, well, we can't do anything about it because uh, only the Vatican. I, there was one guy who told me he was, a, a, he was an official for the Catholic Church. And he said, there's nothing we can do. But there was a priest that I was reporting who was a predator. And he was uh, trying to uh, protect and defend a, a, another priest who was a convicted pedophile. And I was talking to um, this Vatican uh, official. He was uh, an official for, for a Catholic diocese. And he said, there's nothing we can do. Only the Pope can get rid of him. So only the Pope can get rid of him, and there's nothing they can do about it. And these predators can just roam around without any sort of punishment or without being cut off and gotten rid of and reported. So here was this nun telling me that one of her best friends is a, is a wizard. Kabbalist. I mean... And she says, I consider the man to be a saint. I mean, might as well just say El Eliester Crowley is a saint at this point. Oh, God. Yeah. Very bizarre stuff. Very bizarre. But then you look at the history of the Catholic world and you find Kabbalism and Kabbalists. And you find, especially in the Renaissance period, Kabbalism becoming very popular. And Thomas Aquinas. Thomas Aquinas, one of the the greatest doctors of the church, probably the most quoted out of all the Catholic intellectuals. Thomas Aquinas said that astrology can be okay. And he said that as long as, as, long as you don't consider astrology as controlling your free will, then it's okay. Astrology can be okay to a certain extent. See what I'm talking about? This is what I mean by gateway. And... Thomas Aquinas' teacher, his, his mentor, was a guy by the name of Albertus Magnus. And Albertus Magnus was also an astrologer. And Catholics will say, well, this is okay, it's fine, because within certain limits, he accepts astrology. So he's not saying that astrology controls your free will, so as long as he's saying that astrology doesn't control your free will, that's, that's fine. It's okay. But then you read in the in the New Testament, you read about how there were these Christians 
that were being uh, taught by St. Paul and how they got their books on astrology and threw them in the fire. So these, the earliest Christians burned books on astrology. And then later on, uh, the Catholic Church said, oh, no, astrology isn't that bad. Uh, within a certain limit, it's okay to a certain degree. Certain degree, it's okay. The, 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 it's, like, it's like two different universes. The, the Church of St. Paul and the Church later on, very, very different. And then you had uh, uh, Savonarola in Italy telling people that the church was full of pedophiles and that the church had become uh, very corrupt and evil. He even, he even told the priest, he said, you corrupt the world. You corrupt the world. And what did they do to, to, to Savonarola? What did they do? They killed him. They accused him of things that he didn't do. They made a, a joke of a trial. They, uh, they, they put things in his testimony that he never said. They said, oh, he said this, and he never said. Like, for example, there was a famine in the area that he was in, and they said, oh, he, he admitted to uh, contributing to the famine. When the reality was that there was a war, and the war was putting a blockade on food imports. That was the reason for the famine. But they they said no no he actually admitted to being a part of it. Well he never he never admitted to that. They said that he admitted to that. So they were they were making false accusations. They were bearing false testimony against him, and they broke one of the commandments: "Thou shalt not, uh, thou shalt not falsely accuse your neighbor. Thou shalt not bear false testimony." And they did it to this man, and they killed them. They killed them. And that was back in, I think it was in the 1300s, if I'm not mistaken. Girolamo Savonarola, 1400s. Yeah, he was, he, was, he, was, he was killed in 1498. And this nun that I met, going back to this nun, her name was, uh, I have it written down here. Her name was uh, Maria Gloria Riva. Sister Gloria. And this is what she said. She, she is the same bullcrap as this as this sister uh, this sister Stong woman that the Amazonian Council, the Amazonian Synod was was honoring as a martyr. And this is what Sister Gloria Riva wrote. In the church of St. Agatha in Perugia, a 13th century fresco even depicts a single person, Christ, with three faces, a central one and two in profile. Also, in the context of the three-headed trinity, there were also those who, thinking of the spirit as ruha, which is Hebrew, which in Hebrew is feminine, as a feminine principle in the bosom of the trinity, and associating the spirit both to the Virgin Mary and to the Virgin Church, represented, and it is, the case of a fresco of the Church of St. James in Urshaling in Bavaria of the 13th century, the central face between father and son as a face of a girl, that is precisely of the Holy Spirit, of the Adonai Ruha. So you can see how she's mixing Jewish a Kabbalistic spirituality, which is occultism, which is demonic, with Catholicism. And you can see how this is, just, it's a, it's a way of, presenting occultism and paganism, and then covering it up with Christianity. It's a gateway to get people uh, through the door into occultism. And so once you start saying Mother Earth and God, uh, our mother, and well, Mother God and Father God, once you start doing that bullshit, does, it doesn't matter how innocently you portray it, you open the door to Mother Goddess worship. Well, we call, we call God, Mother God. Oh, we say Mother Earth. I mean, why not just worship God as goddess and father at the same time? And you know what? Be like the pagan Greeks. The pagan Greeks uh, said that their gods were both male and female. They said Aphrodite was male and female. And so this is what they want to do with Christianity. They want to make the Christian God as though he is like a Greek deity, being both male and female. It's a doorway into paganism. 
it's a doorway into paganism. And I remember years ago, back back in 2000 and I want to say 18, there was some Catholic assistant professor that contacted me. And he started arguing with me, saying that there is a form of ancestor worship in Catholicism. And I'm thinking, well, how the hell do you justify that? And he told me, this was an intellectual, he told me that uh, in the Catholic world, the word for reverence for saints um, can also, the Latin word for reverence for saints can also be translated as worship. So therefore, we can worship, although it's not the same worship that you would do for God, it's nonetheless translated as worship. So we can worship saints, and some of the saints are ancestors to certain people or you know some saints are ancestors to certain people so therefore when you reverence those saints or worship those saints you are actually worshiping an ancestor therefore ancestor worship is in catholicism do you see that word salad nonsense that that's that this guy pulled this is the kind of crap that you see in the catholic world and i said they don't this is what i told them i was trying to reason with this guy and i said they don't say that someone is an, uh, they they don't say that someone is a saint because he is an ancestor they declare someone to be a saint because of his good deeds because he performed miracles etc and he said well it, it doesn't matter what, th that some of these saints are ancestors to someone so therefore when you reverence them it's ancestor worship uh, i literally told the guy to just buzz off i don't want to talk to you you're obviously bad faith but this is the type of argumentation this guy was utilizing, and it really goes to show that in the Catholic world, you have these sorts of deceivers and sophists and manipulators, and they try to get people in through these gateways into paganism. Well, ancestor worship is okay. As long as you don't worship them as gods, as long as you are worshiping in the sense that you are revering them, and as long as they are officially saints, it's okay. Or, well, we can put an image of this Amazonian goddess, and it's okay as long as we say that this image is of Mother, of, of Mother Mary, the Virgin Mary. You see how crazy this is, guys? It's like there's no rules. It's like as long as you, as long as you, as you use certain terminologies, as long as you say, well, it's the Virgin Mary, as long as you say, well, it's saints, it's okay. And if you criticize it, they say you're some crazy right-wing trad Catholic. That is the manipulation, my friends. It's the manipulation. It's the sophistry. It is the deception. And there's so much of it that's happening. It reminds me so much of what Jesus told the, the Pharisees and the scribes. He said, you know, you, you corrupt the truth with the traditions of men. Who corrupts the teaching of my father with the traditions of man? And he goes to the temple and he drives the merchants out with it with a whip. And he says uh, that, the, that, that, that my father's house was supposed to be a prayer, uh, was supposed to be a house of prayer for all nations. And you have made it into a den of thieves. Well, the Catholic Church has become a den of thieves. Thieves of men's souls. Bottom line. Anyway, you guys just heard some feel logic. God bless. Yeah.